This is Walking Your Talk, a podcast about leadership, authenticity, and courage. I'm Carolyn Taylor. Over my career, I've worked with well over 100,000 leaders in every kind of organization. People who are committed to closing the gap between their own values and those of their organization and how they show up every day. I wrote a book called Walking the Talk on how you change corporate culture, but this is much more personal. If you want to be known as someone who walks their talk, then this podcast is for you. Give your word wisely and watch how your trustworthiness soars. Welcome to the third episode in the series on how to walk your talk on accountability. Today, I'm going to look deeply into why the skill of giving your word actually sets you up to be seen by others as highly accountable. Your clients, your friends, your boss, your colleagues, anyone who is asking you to deliver something for them. And if you get really good at it, you become a role model and you'll find that you can actually build a culture where keeping and giving your word becomes the norm for other people as well as for you. Did you notice how I used the word wisely, to give your word wisely? That's because what you say no to, as well as what you commit to, is actually what helps build your reputation. And if you're anything like me, saying no is not an easy thing to do. And that's one of the reasons we get tripped up on accountability. Actually, last week, a dear client of mine asked me to do a piece of research by talking to members of their team to find out how they were feeling about how the team was going and what they wanted to do next. And she said she wanted it done by last Friday because she had something else to do. Now, my instinct was to say, yes, of course I can do that. But then I kind of remembered I knew that team and I know that they are really chaotic, really hard to get a hold of, really hard to pin down in terms of meetings and so on, and also that they tend to cancel at the last minute. You know, you, you've all got clients like that if you have clients. So I thought for a moment, and I went back and said, actually, I don't think I can do it by Friday. Or if I did do it by Friday, you would have to be able to guarantee for me that I actually got to speak to all the people so I can then put a report together for you afterwards. It was interesting because, you know, we had this to and fro. I pushed back a bit. She thought about what she was going to do. And then she remembered, in fact, that she had the team together. A couple of days later, they were all running an event or something. And and so she lined me up to speak to each of them at the end of that event. So by pushing back, not only did I get a promise I definitely then knew I'd be able to fulfill, but she became involved in the process as well. So that accountability contract that is so important had become very real for both of us. So that's a small example, but it's one of the many that occurs in my life every day, and which I imagine occurs in yours as well. I don't know whether you got to listen to the episode before last, 107, which was called The Essence of Accountability, where the exercise I asked you to do at the end was to write a list of all of the people to whom you need to be accountable, to whom you're giving promises of some sort. And I'm sure if you did it, you would have found it's, you know, it's pretty long. And each of those people really, for you to walk your talk on accountability, deserves that level of thoughtfulness that I gave you in that example of me and my client. Just that level of pausing, thinking, going, okay, am I going to push back on this or not? Instead of just blithely saying yes or blithely saying no. So what do you have to do to make a wise promise? Four things. The first one is actually to notice when there are opportunities for you to give a promise. Because a lot of people are actually very vague in the requests that they make of others. And then we get vague back. We mirror their vagueness. So when somebody is like that with you, help them be more specific. Ask them some more questions. Get them to a point where they're making you a clear request. And then you can make a wise promise in response. So that's the first opportunity. The second one is to pause, to pause and think, is this a yes? Is this a no? Is this a renegotiation? And that pause might be for 10 seconds, or it might be an overnight. It depends how big the request is. But you need to run things through your mind. What's your knee-jerk reaction? And we've all got knee-jerk reactions. Hold that one back and run through your minds. What else have you got on your plate, for example, that could get in the way of you being able to do this? 
what else might come onto your plate that you haven't got at the moment, but you know, you know your life, you know the sort of stuff that comes along. Who else do you depend on? Who you would need to deliver to you in order for you to deliver on this promise? What are the risks? What could go wrong? Do you have everything that you need? All those things you can literally spin round in your head in a few seconds for some things and take longer when you need to. And as you do so, you might want to ask a couple of clarifying questions to really get clear of the other person what they are asking and see if even then you can start to massage it a bit so it becomes easier for you to give a promise. The third one, and this is a biggie, this next thing I'm going to say, I have clients where this was of everything I've ever talked to them about, the thing that they just absolutely have stayed with. You need to make a difference in your mind and in what you say between a promise and an intention. Powerful difference, that. A promise means you can count on me. I will deliver. You can go ahead and make plans on the basis that you will get what I said I would give you. An intention means I will give you my very best effort. And that could be enough. You know, I may well deliver, but I am not promising. And that's very different. It's always better to let the other person know at the beginning when you're in the space of intention. Because if they know that what you're offering is an intention, and if they know you well, they will know how likely that is then to happen, then they can plan accordingly. They will put some risk mitigation plans into their lives so that they don't then get caught out by you not delivering. But if you say that it's a promise, And in the end, you weren't able to deliver it because you never should have promised in the first place. That's what destroys trust. And that's what builds you the reputation for not being someone who is able to walk your talk when it comes to being accountable. And the fourth and last thing is open negotiations. Promise half of it if you have to and intend the other half. Or see if you can push the deadline a little bit. Or see if you can make what you deliver in the first round, a little bit less substantial than what you'll deliver later on. If you don't feel like you can make a promise, you open the negotiation at the beginning and hopefully from that you will end up with something where you both feel good to. And so that's what I call a commitment conversation. It is a deliberate interaction where you end up with both parties agreeing that you, in this instance, are promising to deliver something to them. And that is at the heart of accountability. So that leads me to the exercise for this week. Simple one, but powerful one, which is to be conscious, to note the opportunities that you have during the week to make a promise. And then to follow those four steps. Be deliberate about it. Be clear about when you're making a promise and when you're making an intention. Use that language and just practice going through those steps as often as you can. Maybe it'll be once a day. Maybe it'll be once a week. It could be with your friend. It could be with your partner. It could be with your kids. It could be with your team members. It could be with one of your clients. It could be with a tradesman. It could be with anybody. But just find those opportunities where you have the opportunity to deliver to somebody else. So why is all this so effective and why will it help build your trustworthiness? Well, first of all, because you're now clear and deliberate about giving your word. You have elevated giving your word to something that means far more to you, never mind to anyone else, than perhaps it did before. Secondly, your asker is now also clear on what you've delivered. So they've been helped to get clear on what's going to be possible. And if there was any lack of clarity, or if both of you or either of you had doubts, you've discussed it and you've sorted it out. You've had that commitment conversation. And that actually considerably increases the likelihood that you will deliver. One of the things I've found in all the work that I've done with people is that having the front end conversation well increases their likelihood of being able to deliver at the back end. So I hope you have a really good time trying out that exercise. And next week, we're going to cover what you do as the deliverer, as the person who gave your promise, to make sure that you actually do deliver. How can you increase the likelihood that you will be somebody who consistently delivers? So that's the next important component of walking your talk on accountability. It's been great having you with me today, and I look forward to the next time.